Good morning, and thank you for joining us. We'd like to welcome those watching and listening live on Masson, 105.7 The Fan, and across our Orioles digital platforms. We will begin with an introduction from John Angelos and Louis Angelos, and then an opening statement from Executive Vice President and General Manager Mike Elias. John? Thanks, Kristen. Good morning. This is a truly exciting day in Orioles history. Uh, we thank you all for coming to spend time with us. Uh, before we formally introduce Mike, uh, uh, we wanted to spend a little time just talking about how we got here. Um, Lewis and I uh, spent the last uh, several weeks, uh, uh, almost six weeks, going through an exhaustive process. Lou's going to talk about that a little bit. Um, I, I just wanted to spend a second talking about the recent past. As, as, as you all know, prior to this season, the club has had a lot of success. In the last six years prior to 2018, we were fortunate enough to enjoy three playoff appearances and won more games than any team in the AL. And during that time, as or more importantly, this ownership group, all of our investors being local Marylanders and supporters of Baltimore City, has spent a tremendous amount of time as a first priority, making certain that the Orioles are meaningful and impactful in the community. Professional team sports, baseball, the Orioles, the Ravens, all the professional clubs around the country are important for many, many reasons. Certainly it's about raising trophies and winning divisions and winning games. It's also about a bigger picture. It's about the things that an organization can do to influence young people, to create opportunities for kids to play organized sports, and to take a great platform like Major League Baseball and an iconic franchise like the Orioles and do good things for others with it. All of the owners of, who make up the partnership group that are fortunate enough to provide stewardship to the Orioles are in intensely committed to that. So we start there. We start with the idea that the Orioles are a public trust and that the goal of this ownership group of local Marylanders is to do right by the franchise in all respects. Over the last year, we spent a great deal of time reimagining and reinvesting in our business operations. We've brought in a great number of important folks from around the sports world, and we've promoted many, many valuable folks inside our group, and we've been building towards the best possible franchise we can have. This year, as we hit some difficult times on the field, we turn that reimagining towards baseball operations. And most recently, at the end of the season, as you know, we made a commitment to go out into the community and find the very best person to lead baseball operations for this ball club now and into the future. Uh, Lou, Lou is going to talk a little bit about that process and the time that we invested and what a robust and, and, and really informative process that was for us. Thank you, John. Um, well, just to welcome to Mike and um, everyone here, we are uh, thrilled and excited uh, to introduce Mike today. Um, it's Mike's presence here today as the next uh, EVP and GM of the Orioles is a process, or is a, is a result rather, of the process uh, of the last five weeks of, of extensive and um, exhaustive interviews, uh, really, that, uh, um, that were um, uh, very beneficial, I think, to all, all, all the individuals that participated. Um, certainly, I can say for myself, and I know I speak for John, um, we, um, we had the great benefit of meeting with so many qualified candidates um, and, and learning about so many different operations and ideas um, the, uh, within baseball operations. But one thing that came through um, is, as we all have heard so much about, is uh, the move towards quantitative uh, analysis in baseball. And, um, um, we, I thought we might have to uh, um, uh, maybe you know, sort of arm wrestle Mike a little bit to, uh, to see. He, he wanted to show us his PowerPoint so quickly that, uh, that uh, we, uh, we, uh, he was right in the room and, and with, the, with the monitor open, and uh, he was raring to go. And he made a, an amazing first impression, and I think you'll see that today. Um, the, the, uh, the extent to which we, um, uh, we, we met with candidates for sometimes six and eight hours over a period, again, of, of many weeks. And um, um, throughout that process, we... Uh, uh, we, we saw that Mike's, uh, you know, sort of uh, key kind of cut the learning curve is sort of how he phrased it. Um, and we, we learned from all the candidates that it was essential that, uh, 
uh, as, as we reinvest in our baseball operations, that we, uh, um, that we work uh, diligently to uh, get our staff up to speed, um, that we will we'll be working collaboratively to, um, in, to move you know, diligently uh, in that direction. And so um, without any uh, further ado, I don't know, John, if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. I think we, we learned quite a bit about it. We had great candidates, uh, former GMs, assistant GMs, folks inside baseball, outside baseball, um, folks that worked at the league and worked for clubs. You couldn't have asked for a, a, a better approach. There was a tremendous amount of interest. And um, it, it's, it's always great to have goals and a super process to effectuate those goals. We tried to do that. Um, but when you get a great result at the end, um, it all comes full circle. And we wanted to sit today side by side and let you all know that the, the goals were, uh, we thought, well placed. The process, we tried to be as deliberative and thorough as we could be. And boy, do we think we came up with a great result. We couldn't be happier to have Michael Elias come on board with this organization. It's a team effort, but team is all about hiring the best people and letting them do their job. We brought Mike here as part of this organization, really coming home, be back with in the area where he grew up, in the region where he grew up, and um, couldn't be happier that Mike Elias is going to be the next general manager of the Baltimore Orioles. So let me introduce Mike and give him a big handshake. Thank and you. We're looking forward Thank to you. it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank the Angelos family and this ownership group for uh, bringing me here and uh, affording me this incredible opportunity to join an organization with this type of history and to be a big part of leading it going forward. Um, throughout the process that they described, we had uh, a lot of extensive conversations, talked a lot of baseball, talked a lot of business, um, and through all that, their plan and vision for the next chapter of uh, Orioles baseball, the next era of Orioles baseball was made very clear to me. Um, and I'm here to tell all of you and the people of this region and the fans of this team that their vision and plan for the next era of Orioles baseball is something about which you should all be very excited. Uh, I'd also like to thank Jim Crane and Jeff Luno of the Astros um, for their graciousness and support in allowing me to pursue this. Um, they have right now, top to bottom, the best operation, the best organization in baseball. I was very fortunate to have been a part of that. Um, and um, their success is something that we will strive to emulate here. Uh, I'd also really like to thank my wife, Alexandra. She's actually not here. I've already got her working on the crazy logistics of moving our family from Houston to Baltimore as soon as possible. But uh, her support throughout my career and um, really the support of baseball spouses everywhere is something that is taken for granted uh, a little too often in our line of work. Um, throughout this entire process, I always felt particularly drawn to the possibility of this job uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one of those is that I'm from this region, and I grew up in Northern Virginia. And when you're a kid growing up in Northern Virginia, Baltimore is a place that you come to to have fun. And uh, so I grew up coming to Camden Yards, visiting the Inner Harbor, visiting the aquarium. Uh, later on, my sister lived here for a while. She got married here. So I already have a lot of positive memories and positive impressions of this city. I already know this city. I already love this city. So I'm very excited to be here uh, for that reason. Uh, I also got a chance to see Camden Yards, to be at Camden Yards at a time when um, the, the stadium was filled to the brim, when the city was supporting a championship caliber team, a playoff caliber team. And so I know that there's no place better in baseball when that's the case. Um, but I was also particularly drawn uh, to this because uh, I think very uniquely this organization has in its history and in its DNA having at one time been considered as the smartest, most forward-thinking, most progressive organization in baseball. And the fact that that has been the case here before means that it's possible for that to be the case here again. Um, we are here to restore that reputation. We're going to work towards that. Um, the plan is simple. We're going to build an elite talent pipeline. It's going to extend from the lowest rung of our minor league ladder, uh, the Dominican Summer League, all the way up through AAA and onto the major league roster here in Baltimore. In order to do that, we're going to embark on a large 
multi-pronged effort across every corner of baseball operations, um, but particularly touching the areas that include scouting, domestic scouting, international scouting, player development, coaching, uh, and an analytics support system to inform and improve our processes and decisions across all of those areas. Um, this, um, this organization, is, this team is coming off uh, an incredible uh, run, uh, including a five-year period where um, they were the winningest team in the American League against a lot of odds, against a lot of expectations. Um, that is a huge credit to the prior administration, um, the work of people that some of whom aren't here any longer, a lot of whom are still here. Um, and it's also a credit to ownership and um, the fact that ownership has really always extended a level of support and resources that is maximal towards uh, putting out a, um, a playoff caliber major league roster. And now we're going to see that same type of support channeled towards investment and activities in the areas that I described. Um, this is a process. It's a process that doesn't have shortcuts, but it's a process that works, and it's a process that is worth it, and it's a process that I have been a big part of before. And the fact that I have done this before, um, really twice across two different organizations, gives me a special level of confidence that we're going to do it again and repeat that same type of success here in Baltimore. Questions? Rob Long from the fan. Uh, any similarities between this Oriole team and the Houston Astro team that you, from the early years there? Well, I think uh, one thing that we will find is similar um, and is important to note is that there are players on this, a lot of players on this team right now and in this organization who are going to be a part of the next playoff team here in Baltimore. They're here right now. Um, and so we are going to, uh, on top of acquiring new talent, we're going to do our best to improve and develop the, the talent that is already here. Um, and I think when you look back at our first year in Houston and look at some of the players who are on the roster and already in the organization, it's a pretty impressive group of names. So I'm looking forward to seeing who that's going to be here. Rocket Vodka with Massa Sports. Uh, do you ever set any sort of a, a timeline on how long a process like this would take, and how exactly do you incorporate analytics into it? Um, look, we're gonna we're gonna work as fast and as smart, smartly, and as as hard as possible. Um, we're going to remain focused on the process. We're going to continuously improve the talent base up and down this organization, whether that's at the major league level or at the minor league level, and we'll see what happens. Um, I have confidence that uh, we can do this, and we can do this in the right amount of time. Um, and the, the analytics portion of it is, um, you know, it's something that's not optional in today's game. It's a lot of advanced information. Um, the trick is how you incorporate it into your decision making and into your baseball practices so that it's not two different approaches going on, but it's one approach that comes out of that. So there, there will be a lot, of, a lot of work and a lot of expertise um, in that area. Question is for um, either John or Lou. When you mentioned all the qualified candidates that you went through, how exhaustive it was, um, what about Mike, besides that great first impression, stood out? And did you feel a lot of pressure to get this thing right, no matter how long it took? Well, uh, he went to Yale, and my brother went to Hopkins, and I went to Duke. So we had Ivy League envy, and we thought, got to get a Yale, got to get a Yale guy in here to round out the uh, the academic credentials. But um, um, no, I think Lou touched on it a second ago. Uh, uh, Mike made a fantastic impression, not just initially, but all throughout the process. He was incredibly prepared. Um, um, thoughtful, um, both at, at the 40,000 foot view and then right on down into the weeds. He could, he could move laterally and, and, and uh, vertically uh, in terms of being incredibly uh, competent and uh, knowledgeable about the subject matter. And it was just an impressive performance from beginning to end. Um, to, your, to your second question, um, did we feel the pressure? To, um, you know, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would use the word pressure. I would use the word obligation. 
Um, I think that, um, as, I, as I alluded to earlier, we, Lou and I, and, and all the owners in our group really feel, I mean, we're all from here and we love the club and we want the club to do well. And, you know, um, the, the, we want the club to be influential and impactful in the communities as much as it can be, um, because that's the reason to be involved. Um, you know, holding up trophies, as I mentioned, is nice, and it's absolutely at the top of the list in many, many ways. But, you know, winning is great also because the more you win, the more people are involved and are passionate about you, and then the more influential you are in the community. And that, that's the bigger picture that I was touching on earlier. So I, I would say absolutely we, we felt an, an obligation. And one, one thing to add there, you know, when you go out and interview, I mean, we just recently hired a COO for business operations, and, and we've hired a lot of folks in those areas. And we go out, and you have limitless time, and you can really deliberate, and you can you take people from all different walks of life and, and it's, a, it's, it's, it's in baseball and sports generally, it's a very different process because you're under the time constraints of the, not the in-season calendar, but the off-season calendar and you're under the time constraints of the permission process. So you need to be mindful of that. Yet at the same time, you're making a decision that you, not, are not, not that you're going to live with, but that you want to live with for the next decade, let's say, or longer. I mean, we want to be sitting here talking with Mike about all the great things we've accomplished as an organization five and 10 and 15 and 20 years from now, and this isn't something that you do and then hope you do it again. So sure, pressure, but I think obligation is the way we looked at it. Dan Connolly of The Athletic. It's kind of a two-pronged question, first for Mike and then for John and Lou. You know, much has been made about the autonomy of this position, that this position is going to be allowed to make baseball decisions um, specifically. That has not been the case in the past, and that's certainly not the reputation at times with the Orioles. For you, Mike, what sold you that that would be the case going forward? And for John and Lou, um, why did you stress that message? Why do you think there was an, it was an importance to stress that message? As I said, we uh, had a lot of very extensive conversations throughout this process, and um, we sat down, we talked a ton of baseball, and we both came into those conversations, not both, we all came into the conversations with um, very specific plans and ideas and visions in mind for what this should look like, how we should go about these things. And we were on exactly the same page with what the approach should be. Um, and for me, that is something that is necessary a, for them to want to hire me for this position, but also for me to want to jump on board. Yeah, I think that's right. I think we were, we were aligned um, in that. I mean, you know, organ fundamental organizational management is about um, everybody playing their position, much like team sports, right? So the idea is ownership has a role to play, and that's a very discreet role. And the obligation, as I mentioned in, in, to Brittany, is you know, to get them the best people in each discrete position. So get the absolute best business operations head, get the absolute best baseball operations person in, involved, and, and, and give them the resources, uh, let them do the job. Yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, Rich Dubrow from BaltimoreBaseball.com. What is the timetable for selecting uh, a manager? Has it, has it already begun? Is it imperative that you have a manager in position before the start of the winter meetings? Um, the uh, process and the background work has already begun. Um, you know, I have a lot of contacts around the game, and I have uh, certainly already started um, tapping in to those networks. Um, doing background work on candidates, um, but uh, this, this is an important hire, just like this was an important hire for them, um, and it's not something to rush uh, for the sake of meeting artificial dates in the wintertime. Um, we want to get the right person for our organization, for our front office, for us, um, for this time. And um, you know th these are these are thorough processes when you're talking about a, a job that big. So we are already working on it, but I do not have a specific timetable or date uh, at this time. Mike uh, Peter Schmuck from the Baltimore Sun. Um, obviously, Dan Duquette uh, went through the process in July of moving out most of the veteran players and bringing in a, a group of young players to kind of reseed the, the minor league system. Do you view that as 
as this part of the start of the rebuilding or you, do you plan to just hit the ground as a, as a fresh start and reevaluate all of that and go forward? No, I do. I, they, uh, those were the right moves. Um, the, the team had uh, uh, left a period of competitiveness that was clear by the, the trade deadline. Uh, a lot of players were on expiring contracts. Um, it was clear that it was time to bring in new, younger talent into the organization, and those were key opportunities to do that. And I'm glad that those moves happened, and we're going to build off of that work. Mark Benny Allen, WKD here in Baltimore. Mike, um, what you experienced in Houston obviously included a period of time in rebuilding that was difficult. There were a lot of losses early on. How will you address your people in terms of stealing them for that sort of inevitability of the growing pains that are being involved here? And, and can you say how, how long your commitment is in terms of a contract? Um, in terms of the, the, uh, the build that you're referring to, um, we're going to do this as quickly as we can. Uh, I'm, we're going to do everything in our power to move things in the right direction. We're not going to be perfect with our decision making. Nobody is. Um, but we're going to do everything possible to move this along as quickly as possible and add talent to this organization in every direction um, and until the, the, the wins um, pile up. Um, it's important for everyone in the organization to understand what all is going into that process, um, kind of all pulling on the, the same rope to do that. It sounds cliched, but it, it takes some work and some management to get everyone to understand what exactly that we're doing. And um, it's, it's, it's a... Um, it's a matter of, of communication, and not just with coaches and scouts, but also with players. There's a lot of players here that are going to be very important parts of our future. They have a really good opportunity right now to get a lot of playing time, to get a lot of experience at the major league level, and we're going to be watching what they do and helping them along as they adjust to the major leagues and, and, and grow their careers. Dave Ginsburg, Associated Press. Uh, belatedly, the Orioles made a commitment to the international market, uh, and I was wondering how important that was to you in terms of this rebuild. It's very important. Um, in this uh, day and age in baseball, you need to tap into every available uh, avenue for acquiring talent. Um, there are so many stars coming out of the international market, particularly in Latin America, um, that it is essential. Um, to attack that market smartly and correctly. Um, I can tell you we will be making additions to our international operation um, over the, the near term. Um, but I think part of uh, the Angelos family's attraction to me in this job is I, wa I was a sitting international scouting director. And so I have um, current knowledge of the players that are out there. I have strong relationships with all of the agents in that market and I can hit the ground running and it's uh, a matter of uh, picking up the phone at this point to, to get us going. So we, we will be attacking that market in better ways as soon as possible. Jerry Coleman with 105.7 The Fan. I guess today, uh, for John and Lou and, and a follow up with Mike, I guess today signals a new era. Um, John or Lou, whoever's comfortable taking it or both. Is the power structure change in terms of uh, ownership all the way down now? And Mike, a question for you as a follow-up. In terms of looking for a manager, is it going to be someone who embraces analytics and, and will live by that? Mario uh, first. The, the manager question, um, will, will the manager embrace analytics? Um, I think everyone at, at an upper level of baseball right now um, <laughs> Is, is, is aware of and current with, with that topic. As I said, this is not um, something that should come um, from an oblique angle and be separate from your baseball decision making or your baseball sensibility. This is something that um, all of the individuals, especially those in, in decision making positions, um, need to incorporate in those decisions. Um, and there's a lot of good candidates out there today and um, I would be very surprised if any of them uh, are not uh, current on, on uh, that approach. Uh, Jerry, I would, I don't, uh, we have a, the ownership group has a lot of continuity to it and stability and uh, many of our partners have, uh, from the beginning are almost all 
involved today, and uh, where they weren't, there were some reasons why they stepped away, and in some cases to buy other franchises and, um, or other ball clubs. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of staying power for the long haul and no major changes. Um, we're looking forward to the next uh, 25 years. We've obviously spent more of our time on uh, getting the right approach and getting the right management philosophy and adding to what we've done in the past, doing things differently and getting the right folks in here. So that, that's where our focus is right now. Um, you mentioned the importance of analytics, uh, analytics. A name that's been associated <coughs> with yours is Sigma Dell, who is what left the Astros. Have there been discussions of bringing him with you over here? And if not, anyone else particular that stands out that's been successful with analytics in baseball? Um, I think it's pretty standard policy not to comment on the status of free agents. But um, we're going to be looking for leadership um, and experience in this area. We will be bringing in uh, outside talent to help with that. Um, and there's, there's good people out there, and I'm, I'm going after them as quickly as possible. Stan Charles with Pressbox. Mike, first of all, welcome to Baltimore. Thank you. It's a good run here. As a follow-up to David's question about international scouting, could you talk a little bit about what that really looks like to you to be all in on that? How many scouts is it? Is it an academy down in Latin America? And as, as part of that, Dan Duquette, when he made these trades, acquired a good deal of bonus slot money. Is it too late to use some of that to better the organization before July 1st? So uh, having a, a robust uh, acquisition function in, in the international space is, is key. It's not a matter of um, how many scouts, but who they are and what they're doing and how they're equipped. Um, you, you, it, it does require a lot of coordination with your player development apparatus in the Dominican Republic. You use the complex very heavily uh, as a scouting and recruiting tool, um, and it's it's kind of neat how you can get your um, your coaches involved in the uh, upfront evaluation process. It's something that's a little harder to do here in the states, and it's it's kind of part of the the fun down there. Um, but we're going to um, do it the way that we know how to do it well. Um, we're going to be smart about it. Um, we're going to have a, a great international operation as soon as possible. And, and we're going to um, be aggressive with the money that we have and, and do the best we can. Sean Tebner with WMAR TV, right here, Mike. Um, can you just share your thoughts on the current roster and minor league system that you're walking into here? A lot of good players here. Um, there, um, uh, there are more coming. Uh, I'm, you know, from, as a scouting director, I'm familiar with uh, a lot of the players in the minor league system. Um, there are some future stars in the system. There's some really good pitchers, um, and there's there's more than enough here to work with. And that's part of the attraction of, of this job to me. Is I, I know that there's there's already players here that we're going to be able to lean on over the next few years and, and watch grow. which executives who are still here that you're basically inheriting or department heads that you would want to retain in the organization? Are there any, any specifics you could offer of any people? You know, I'm still getting acclimated. I'm still meeting people. And I've, I've talked to um, most, if not all, of the upper level executives so far. The conversations have been great. Um, you know, there, there's, there's good work being done. Um, but, um, you know, these types of transitions always involved uh, sort of a uh, getting to know one another period and, and getting plugged in and I'm, I'm just at the very beginning of, of that process right now but I'm looking forward to more of these conversations and it's one of my many priorities over the next week or two. Do you have a, a, a profile of the manager that you're going to hire? I mean are there attributes you can share with us that are must as far as this job goes? Profile the manager? Yeah, they're just a typical candidate, someone that you would hire. You, you, you know, I, I don't, um, the, it, because you, what happens when these processes, you end up dealing with a, a menu of people, really, the individuals who have distinguished themselves. And um, to uh, sort of come in with a cookie-cutter profile, it, it's, it's very unlikely that um, the, the handful or, or um, 
dozen people that you that you start fo to focus in on is going to fit that profile perfectly. There's certainly areas where we're going to be uh, looking for strengths. Uh, I think anyone is is looking for uh, leadership and ability to deal with players well and, and their manager. Um, but also, we are going to want somebody with some strengths in, in player development, and also, you know, interfacing with uh, a, front, a front, modern front office. So there's a lot of boxes to check, but the important thing is zeroing in on the right individuals and then selecting the best one that, for us. Mike, Paul McDonough with Masson. You obviously oversaw the, a lot of the drafts when you were in uh, Houston as well as St. Louis, and you hold the number one overall pick. How would you describe your draft strategy? Um, we have had a lot of success in the draft, and um, our strategy is very simple. We use all of the information available to us and we combine it in a way that yields to the best possible decisions. Now, I'm not going to go into the specifics of how we do that, but it involves collecting all types of information, scouting information, performance information, uh, information that's derived from technology, medical information, information about the player's makeup, his, his mental um, skills. And um, we funnel that into our decision-making process in the draft. And if we adhere to our process, you're not going to make every pick perfect, but over time your results are going to be better than your competitions. And that's what we're going to look to replicate here. I'm excited to do it. Uh, John and Lou, this is, uh, an unusual, this is an unusual forum. From now on, do you guys expect to be a little more visible uh, and uh, for the f for the fans and, and for us. Oh. <laughs> I guess that's uh, a no. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, for you, Rich. Yes. Yeah. No. I don't. So I don't know what I don't. I don't know how I would characterize. I, okay. I character the, characterize this forum as transparent. Okay. So I look at this as a conversation that we're all having. Obviously, it's occasioned by the very exciting. Uh, a happening of uh, bringing in Mike to be the new GM of the O's. So that's a great reason to sit down and have a conversation. But does that mean that we'll, we'll, we'll be more available? I, you know, we live here. We grew up here. We spent our whole lives here. We're not going anywhere. So we'll be available. Yes. Luke Jones, WNST. John and Lou, there have been questions about Brady Anderson's role in the past and sometimes questions about chain of command. I was wondering, one, is he going to remain? Two, is he going to have a more clearly defined role? And will he answer to Mike as far as baseball operations? Well, I think, as Mike indicated, he's spoken to all the uh, high level um, executives. Um, and uh, we've discussed, as he just mentioned, uh, those have been great conversations. We had some of those discussions about all aspects of baseball operations uh, in the lengthy meetings we had. Um, and I think in this, in this transition period in particular, uh, I, I believe Mike's going to be relying on um, all of the uh, individuals who have great knowledge and deep knowledge of our current players. and um, So it's, that extends across the board, and I don't think Brady's really uh, any different in that respect. Uh, so um, I, think, I think it'll be pretty straightforward as, as far as that transition goes forward. have to determine, um, I assume, where uh, you know, people are uh, going to make the best contribution, um, whether it's player development um, or what have you. So... Um, so we're all excited and looking forward to that transition and collaborating as, um, you know, as an organization. So. Yeah, Mike, um, looking down the road, how, how, uh, how much do you anticipate restructuring the minor league uh, personnel, the minor league system, um, and player development in, in total? Um, I, I, th I think it's too early for me to uh, – be able to, to speak to that with, with any kind of precision. Um, like I said, there's, there's good players here. There's good players coming. Um, I have been fortunate enough um, to be very accustomed to having an elite farm system, one of the top five or ten in the league, um, wherever we've been. Um, and my focus is on getting there. And so, um, you know, we'll see what all that entails. Um, but um, it's going to be, obviously, a huge area of emphasis for us. This is for John and Lou. <clears throat> As you've been going through this process, um, you've also had the Masson situation. 
as you guys have had to deal with as well, both ongoing and now specifically in the last week. I know it, it, it's still kind of somewhat nebulous on exactly what the result is going to be, but how much do you, are you concerned that that could affect the bottom line and that could potentially affect what you guys are trying to do to rebuild this franchise? Well, that, that's it's the, the review of rights agreements and all of those matters really, I don't know, are that germane to today, but I think I can answer your question by saying we don't envision that it will have any impact on any of the things we're talking about today. I think as Mike well said, um, the focus of ownership's resources in the recent past and an effort to win during that this most recent five or six year period was very much in investing, perhaps over investing in a major league player payroll relatively. Um, Mike has all the same resources today that we've had for baseball ops in the past. He'll have them in the future to do with as he sees fit. Um, he has um, the com same commitment irrespective of of that particular matter. That matter will come and it will go. And when it goes, um, all those things will still be in place and at Mike's disposal to make all the decisions he needs to be make about allocation of resources, uh, selecting a manager, all the things that you all have talked about or asked good questions about today, um, overseeing staff. Uh, you know, the buck stops with him and um, he's here to do the job. And uh, we provide the resources and I think they'll be in good stead. Um, I think that that's uh, not exactly the way I would I would phrase it. I think I would say that it, the general manager has the purview over baseball ops in all respects. He puts together the action plan going forward. He puts together the budget, and it, it is then fits into the overall financial view of the company. So long as the company is in a good place, which it will be now and into the future, then all the resources will be there to allow the general manager to effectuate any strategy he puts together and any set of resource and staffing and whatnot allocation that he sees fit. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll be in a good place there too. Mark? Hey John, uh, similar questions that I asked Mike, but an ownership perspective on, in a best case scenario, it does take years before this bears fruit in terms of winning. What is your message to the fan base relative to dealing with that period of time that there will be some growing pains. So Lou, Lou can talk, I mean, we talked a lot about this, you know, in, the, in our meetings. I mean, we met with Mike probably 25, 30, I don't know, untold hours, lunches and dinners and all <laughs> kinds of stuff. So, um, and that's good because you, you ask those kinds of questions. And, and I would say that every time I think Lou and I might have said, well, we don't know, will the fan base, base wait? Mike, Mike's very, I think, disciplined about his approach. And you could probably talk about that too, both of you. So. Well, I think from an ownership perspective, um, I think this is the time for fans to maybe um, uh, sort of invest, if you will, along with us uh, in, the, in the process. I mean, I think it's an exciting potential here. Um, Mike's deep background in scouting, as he mentioned and touched on earlier, um, not only international scouting, but uh, most recently, but amateur scouting, um, really uh, ma made quite a difference uh, in, the, in the discussions that we had. Um, the, and obviously the Astros' success. and. Um, hearing about that, learning about it in detail, um, and, and the fact that it, he's been through this, and we, we talked a lot about that. that um, uh, but getting back to your question, I think the, the, the point is that um, this is an exciting time to look at the players that are coming forward, um, to learn more about these processes, um, to, to uh, as you mentioned, the talent that we'll be looking for um, in the, uh, not only in quantitative areas, but in, um, uh, in scouting, in player development, to start to revamp certain operations, really all operations. Um, I think that's exciting for fans to, to see that evolve. Um, uh, I, know, I know it's going to be for us, so, and everybody in the organization. This will be the last question then, Rock. Um, for John or Lou, I get asked, and I'm sure everybody else was on the beat multiple times a day, how does Chris Davis and the contract fit into this rebuild and the plans you have moving forward? How would you address that? Uh, that's again, that's a great example. Of, that's really a mic question, I think, and, and uh, um, I would really defer that to him. Um, this, to me, this lineup, uh, this team, is at its best with a uh, productive Chris Davis, a dangerous Chris Davis in the middle of the lineup. So I want to see that happen. Um, you know, he had a frustrating campaign this year. Uh, I think the chances are good of him bouncing back and improving upon that, and I, I'm going to get involved 
in the work going into uh, his off-season work, his preparation, and any ideas, new ideas or information that we can provide to him uh, to help him out, um, we, will, we will do our best to do that. So that, that's my hope. Great. That will wrap it up. Thank you so much for coming. We're going to have a quick photo up on the stage, and then we'll split up for some one-on-ones. Thank you.